can we do mind reading? Can we do mind control? Does that language even make sense anymore? We have all sorts of new ways of looking inside the brain while you're thinking, perhaps while you're dreaming. Some scientists have actually been able to create video images. Pretty fuzzy right now, but nonetheless, moving in a certain direction with powerful computers, visual video images of what people's thoughts are while they're having them. My name is Jonathan Moreno. I'll be teaching the course on neuroethics. When people ask me, what do I mean by neuroethics? I say, well, uh, you remember those LSD experiments that you might have heard something about in the 50s and 60s that were done by the CIA and the US Army? Um, do you remember the psychedelic experience that the country had? It's an example of how much interest there was in the academic world in the late 50s and early 60s in the, the era of what we might think of as pre-neuroscience. We have a vanishing line between therapy for the brain, for brain disorders, and enhancing the brain, making ourselves better, smarter, uh, we think. We also have devices that are able, using magnetism and electricity, to change the way we perceive things and experience things. Experiments are being done all over the world with uh, transcranial magnetic stimulation, closed brain experiments. The software that runs our brains is the most sophisticated software there is. But there are people who believe that we can make it better, that we can, uh, that we can understand it more deeply. A lot of interest in, uh, in terms of national security and uh, counterintelligence work in understanding uh, why people are violent, how to manage violence, how to manage political violence in an era in which we're again concerned about terrorism. As we expect more and more technology to be part of the craft of the individual warfighter, what effect will it have on them when we strip those technologies away from them and return them to civilian life? There's a lot of interest these days and concern about the use of drones, particularly uh, drones in the air that are capable of firing a lethal weapon. What people don't think about as much is whether you could even better control these drones, not by pushing joysticks and buttons, but through a direct connection between your brain and that robot. And there's already uh, being tested a, a sentry robot at the demilitarized zone between North and South Korea that uh, has uh, loaded with technology, loaded with weaponry, and according to news reports, with one switch, could make an autonomous decision to fire without human intervention. There are already uh, defensive autonomous weapons on American ships that make their own decisions of whether to fire or not with human monitoring. There are some people who think that we are now in the process, on the verge of at least, through neuroscience and also through other complementary fields like genetics and nanotechnology, of creating the next stage of human evolution. How is the science changing the way we think of our brains? How is it changing the way we think of ourselves, our communities, our relationships, and how is it changing the values that we bring uh, to the ways we live? Those will be some of the questions that we'll ask in the course on neuroethics.